First of all, I want to say Tashi Delik. And this is a, a video for this first session of the online gathering. And I will explain to you everything in detail and there will be a translation along with it. So in this very moment, you don't need to be in this meditative posture. You can just sit back, relax, make sure that your mind and your intention is pure that is the most important when it's time to receive empowerment instruction about how to meditate and so on and so forth yes definitely but when you receive a teaching it is good to be in the meditative state at least a posture but if that is not possible it is still fine but most important is a pure intention and that pure intention has to be that since that I received these teachings of the Lord Buddha and Bodhisattvas and I will benefit all the sentient beings by learning the Dharma, by practicing the Dharma and by genuinely sharing the Dharma to all the sentient beings. You know, having that pure intention is the most, most important in this session and also for the next episodes as well. So, I will start with the refuge, mandala, and visualizing your own guru and my own gurus. So, so that's that at the moment. Go sanje jo don jo ge jo nam la la jang jo ban don don ni jang jo ge da ge jo jo ge be so nam ge ro la pen jo san jo jo ge jo nam la jo don don ni jang jo ge da ge jo jo ge be so nam ge ro la pen jo san jo jo ge jo. Sanje Jadon Zoge Jonam La Janju Bandu Dani Jazu Che and Dagi Jesu give us on Namge and Rolla Pinja Sanjay and Drobrasho. Sanje Jadon Zoge Jonam La Janju Bandu Dani Jazu Che and Dagi Jesu give us on Namge. Drolla Pinja Sanji and Drobaran Show Sam Jadam Jindewan and De Judon Debra Juj and Dunga and Dunga and Gin Judan Travel and Juj Dunga maybe Dewa Tambadam and Drawan Juj. Nearly Jal and you don't drive it on your chimbal and never in Jurge, Sam Jetam Jendewa, don't they wait, you don't demoran Jurge, don't want them, don't I get you don't draw and Jurge, don't I may be the water, don't bother, don't I get you don't draw and Jurge, don't I may be the water, don't bother, don't I get you don't draw and Jurge, don't I may be the water, don't bother, don't I get you don't draw and Jurge, don't I may be the water, don't bother, don't I get you don't draw and Jurge, Chan So you visualize your own guru, I visualize my guru, Changkwan Doji Chang Kenten Tai Sidurum Piche as my guru, as he has been my guru for many lifetimes after lifetimes, so that as my witness, as my refuge, and then I will start this session, as I always do that every time. So you visualize your own guru, whoever you consider as a guru, and if you don't have a guru, then you just visualize a Buddha with a pure intention, that's the most important. Okay, so the topic is the creation and completion. The reason I choose this is a, it's a universal teaching. It's nothing to do with his or, or her tradition and lineage and order and so on and so forth. It is, a, a, how do I say, is a basically a Dharma teaching that belongs and should study and read and read by many practitioners and should and that means you and i think that is very important to understand in that way because nowadays even we have so much information we still goes into a, a, a you know like a sectarian world you know my tradition his lineage her lineage and then the bigger one try to you know minimize the smaller one the smaller one try to compete with them you know, other different lineages and traditions and so on and so forth so therefore you know, that is their responsibility. Your responsibility and my responsibility is to keep the pure intention to the Dharma and receiving the teachings 
of the Lord Buddha and with that pure intention in mind and wanting to benefit all the sentient beings that is the most important okay so the reason I choose this text is because you can read 20 times and each time you read the way you reflect towards your mind can be more profound over time as you continue to do your practice the practice definition can be visualization of the deity it can be a calm meditation shamatha and the vipassana it can be your daily routine of whatever the other practice you may be doing and whenever you come back to this one, even you read 20 times, 30 times, each time you read, you know, there will be profound reflection towards yourself. And that is my personal understanding. And that can be your personal understanding over time. So, uh, the, so here, the title is like this. Lam Shuki, Kansa Le Tambu Pala, Pembe, Kezo, Kezo, Shu So. So Lamju Kanza Le Tambopala. Lamshu means uh, the path. Lam means you know path. Shu means entering towards the path. Kanza Le Tambopa. Kanza means like individual like yourself or myself. Tambopala Pembe. Pembe means that can heal and benefit, you know, to shed the light towards the confusion. You know, so Pembe, uh, Kezo, Ke means creation, like an example when you are visualizing a deity, when you are making a prostration, when you are taking a refuge, all these and all, whether you are chanting a mantra, whether you are you know, reading a sutra, whether you are going around the stupas, all these are seen as a creation. It's not simply a creating or projecting a deity. You know, it's seen as a, uh, uh, what do I say, uh, the duality practice, you know, our mind is projecting into an external layer and then when we visualize the different objects and so on and so forth. Dok, dok means completion. Completion means uh, basically uh, all the visualization transforming into a more subtle level so that you create the circumstance to recognize the nature of the mind. Zogi, Nedu Shusu, the Nedu means uh, the essence of all the guidelines are presented here. Shusu means are presented here. Lamju, Kanzaleta, Mupa, the Pembekezo, Pembekezo, Nedu Shusu. So, Tadden Yonsu to the Salming, they don't think they're going to do the number of robots, so get Dogeta, Yen may permanent you one but do. So, the first Jamgun Kungulu de Taye. The reason I am saying this is because, you know, he's, it's a little bit like a preface, you know, when you read a book. So in the traditional text, there's always a bowing down to the, to the root guru, you know. So the first Jangu Kondo Lodatae, you know, his main guru was, you know, Siddhubha Manyinje. And then the previous Kalurambuche's guru is Siddhubha Mawangjo. And my guru is our present Siddharupache, you know, so that is like generation to generation. So it is also has some kind of a special meaning to me because, you know, I say Guru over the lifetimes after lifetimes. Anyway, that's just my personal uh, explanation to you. Tamil Mubatada subject She Bechija Rani Mavichu Vinjan to Chibu Kananta. So he's saying that Ning me Randa Mumba Sharikup, Ning me Randa Mumba Sharikup, it means in this degenerate time, or you can you don't have to say degenerate time, uh, you can say um, in a difficult time, let's say, in the state of the, the the generation or the century of confusion. You know, like an example in European, we say the dark ages, right? So it's more seen like that. It's not necessarily the life becomes shorter and more miserable. It's more to do with uh, understanding in a confusion time, in a time of confusion, you know, in a time of confusion, in a time of darkness. Uh, myself, you know, having this myself, uh, having this uh, 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 you know, 
great teachings of the Dharma. Individual like myself, I have no capacity to share or to preach or to guide anybody. That is my capacity. That's what he said. You know, with the profound meaning of explanation and benefiting all the sentient beings, I do not see myself fit in that responsibilities. You know, even I pretend to be one, and then it is simply uh, exhausting, um, how do I say, uh, activities. But, but, Due to the instruction of my Guru that I cannot abandon the instruction, it is not by force, but rather with a sense of rejoice, with a sense of appreciation, you know, so you have to understand the right mindset. You know, many, many of us, when we think about um, nowadays the Guru-student relationship, many of us, we think that whatever the Guru tells us, we have to do it. That is absolutely not true. You know, Guru will never force you to do anything. Guru will always give you teachings, whether with their behavior, whether with their teachings, or indirectly, they will always be the reflection to you. But the most important is you catching that opportunity, not losing from your grip, and then practicing it, fulfilling it, and keeping the commitment, and so on and so forth. It has to be more it should be coming from more from your side. Like an example, I will uh, tell you one story. Milarepa was so desperate from his own wrongdoing that he wanted to liberate from the sea of samsara so desperately. And then he found the Marpa Lozawa, the great translator, the one who traveled back and forth between Tibet and in, in, in India. And then when he was there asking for Dharma teaching again and again, he was continuously denied many, many times. But under one condition, Marpa said that if you build something for me, then eventually I will give you something in return. And then slowly, slowly that eventually happened. So if you, you know, you know, if you understand the biography, there was never such forced by the guru to the student. Uh, it's more like a, you know a general agreement between each other or, or mutual understanding. You know, when John Dojis came to Canada, Ramdev Mumba got a pen with him, but then Lama Chila Konale, you know. So myself, with an ignorant person like myself, sharing the Dharma to others, I find that very useless. But only based on the blessings of my guru, only by believing in that, and then I will uh, not hide anything, I will not hold back anything, I will not keep any secret of anything, I will simply, whatever comes into my mind, I will simply write it down. Then, you know, if you are angry person, you have everything that comes into your mind is an anger issue, right? If, to the realized being, anything that comes into your, their mind is a great teachings and a great reflection to themselves about the nature of the mind and about the, the relative truth and about the illusion, right? So, so that's what it meant, okay? In, in, in order to translate correctly to you and understand that perspective. Uh, so now you understand the two things, right? The key point is, you know, the student and the, you know, and the guru relation, the connection, is never based on obligation, is never based on force, but rather having a sense of uh, gratitude and sense of respect to each other with a sense of dignity and combine together. And then there's that good balance, right? There's never forced. And then the other one is that, you know, when you have a sense of genuine quality, then the genuine teachings come by itself. If you pretend to be genuine, then, you know, you will mislead yourself and you will mislead others, right? So, so there's a two point to keep in your mind. Uh, and then the next sentence is this one. Mm-hmm. 
Yangning Kangsat Tawata Lame Tune Susan to Vecho. So here is a few sentences that I like to repeat again. Nigeta Jurin Chin Tareto, Tamekyo Malu Chunaja. So he's saying this, uh, you know, Tanjorinche, uh, you know, we call it Milurumbuche, you know, the precious human life. The human life is not, not really precious. It's more to do with the circumstances. Like an example, there's a billions of people in this world who have going, who are going through enormous suffering all the time, all the time. Whether they think that they are powerful, whether they think they are rich, whether they think they are poor, whether they are thinking they are trying to survive, many, many sentient beings are constantly suffering. Out of billions of people, people who hear about the Buddha is very less. People who know about Buddhism, 84,000 teachings of the Lord Buddha, is even less. People who have some interaction with the Dharma is even less. You know, people who has the opportunity to receive the teachings is even less. People finding a genuine instructor is even less. You know, so due to these kind of comparison, we have to consider ourselves fortunate in this very moment. Ultimately, all the sentient beings are bound to be enlightened at the end. That is many, many, many times after. But at the moment, you are a fortunate being. I am a fortunate being. That does not mean, that does not justify your pride either. You know, sense of gratitude, you know, to your past life is very important. You know, oh, in my past life, I, have may, have, I may have accumulated some positivities and due to this result, I have this precious human life and not just have human life, but also meeting with the Dharma. You know, if you look at the sentient beings, the number of sentient beings, not just in this, uh, how do I say, a universe, you know, but look into our planet, you know, there's so many insect, you know, that is constantly dying based on the season and environmental change and there is a constant insect that are evolving and that are there and that their lifespan is short and some of them lifespan is long but either way there are countless 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 sentient beings out of that as a seven billion you know and soon it's going to be eight billion over a few years later maybe in the future you know but at the moment you know, we are the very, very minority one. So therefore, having a sense of appreciation towards our past life and saying, having a gratitude, oh, I must have done uh, a positive accumulation in the past, that is good, but in order to bring a genuine result, you know, for that is to maintain and to connect with the Dharma. You know? And to connect with the Dharma, you need to understand the reality of the suffering and the reality of happiness. If you have no understanding of the reality of happiness, you will not have the real, you know, reality of understanding of what is suffering. You know, so understanding the definition of the suffering is very important. In this modern world, people literally hurting you, that will be possible, but not much as in olden times. You know. Because our lifespan as a human being is much more longer than a few hundred years before. You know, so therefore our physical challenge with other human beings and obstacles is far less than a few hundred years ago. You know? So therefore we are already very fortunate also by that. But understanding the reality of the suffering is not simply when you're happy, you don't have to think about it. When you're not happy, you have to think about it. It doesn't mean that. The reality of the suffering, it does not mean that your life is miserable, that it's hopeless, everything is unhappiness, everything is miserable, it's nothing, there's no point. And being in a completely state of despair is not the reality of understanding of the suffering. The understanding of the suffering has to come down to examining your emotion, 
if you cannot examine your the source of suffering the cause of the suffering and how does the emotion and the projection of thoughts and all this applies and how it multiplies and how it influences our character our perception our judgment our belief and our fixation if you do not uh, examine these things temporary examination of suffering everybody can achieve that you know like an example we all say i don't want to get sick i want to go to the doctor i want to take medicine that level of examination of the reality of suffering is not enough it's good in that level that you take care of yourself it's good but it is still not enough to have a deeper understanding you know so in order to understand the true meaning of happiness is also very important Many people write many books about happiness and how to be happy and how to live happy and so on and so forth. But it always comes down to minimizing the activities, minimizing the attractions, the minimizing the materialism. You know, so the true meaning of happiness comes down to simply being in a state of knowing and sense of emptiness and clarity and transparency in this very moment without any dependency you know so being in that is a true happiness if your happiness has to base on the external material object or based on other different objects you know or in a different sensorial level then it is bound to change if it's bound to change then it's bound to suffer just as we hope to be happy from this unhappiness to happiness isn't it so therefore understanding the true meaning of happiness is very important and instead of fixation towards the happiness idea of happiness is being sold to you many many times throughout the centuries you know so it's time for you to understand the true meaning of happiness and the true meaning of happiness should not come from any sort of external dependency if there's a dependent then it's not a happiness. It's bound to change. If it's bound to change, it's bound to suffer. And if it's suffering, then there's a cycle of illusion. If there's a cycle of illusion, then there's a sense of hopelessness and isolation and depression and so on and on. Okay. So we are very fortunate to meet with Dharma. So this is a very important sentence. In the, many of us, when we go to, you know, a Buddhist world, a Buddhist institution, uh, we always faced with saying that you want to be a Buddhist practitioner, you have to see your guru as a Buddha. Well, I have an objection against that because nobody should be forced to see someone as a Buddha. Even the Buddha himself does not force other people to say or to believe to see him as a Buddha because he is one. He doesn't remind them that people have to see him as a Buddha. He simply shows his genuine quality and based on the genuine quality of the enlightened being, the student follows just like that. You know, so I think it is very important. You know, again, I want to go back to the Milarepa story. For many, many, many years, you know, Milarepa, he worked very hard. He did not receive a one single word of teaching. And he endured so much physical hardship because he built many floor house, nine floor house and, and other houses, you know, all by himself. And then after many years, when then he was about, you know, he was already getting old and there was a lack of physical strength as well. And then over time, slowly, 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 after many years, and then when it was his time to receive the empowerment, you know, and then he received the empowerment of Hevajra from the Marpalotawa. And then in that very moment, he see the Marpalotawa as a Hevajra itself. You know, almost there is no separation between which one is Marpalotawa, which one is Hevajra, but rather the whole mandala of the Hevajra. You know with the concert and objects and the radiance and everything you know and then what i'm trying to say is that when you have a certain level of realization 
you will see your guru, your mentor, your instructor as a Buddha over time. If you are forced to believe that is a Buddha, then that benefit or that improvement, that understanding will not come. Okay, so that's the one thing to keep in mind. Sangjingwana Lama Jesusu Chuge Yani Kanza Tawata Lame Tune Susan Dombecho Rawayu de Chutem Kemalu Zombe to the Shendu Mandrukta Rango Tanzam Yani Margina Namchi Cham Chise Chemato Chijam Mabe Kolo Judegi Banjo Yaja Yumishu Dulu Nam Shekana Leg Jesu Jan. So here comes a very cute few key sentences. He's saying here that Rangwa Yudu Chudim Kemalu, Zombi to the Shindu Madrucha, Rango turns on Yamle Machina. So, in this very moment, you have this opportunity in your hand you know, to practice Dharma. So, I think it is very important for you to realize in this very moment that I am fortunate. And I shall practice. I will utilize this time and this opportunity to practice Dharma within my own capacity. That sense of acceptance. It doesn't have to be big acceptance, it's just small acceptance, you know, to start with. So basically it's saying that you know every life that is on earth, once there's a birth and then there's a death. And we believe like that. And of course, we have to believe like that in the beginning. Of course, otherwise, we will not even practice it. You know. But eventually, we need to have an understanding that death is not the end. You know. It's a continuity. It's a transaction. But in order to make a proper transaction, you need to have a positive karma you know, in your hand. And many people, when they think about positive karma or negative karma, they think about white color, balls of negative black colored balls and they have this kind of imagination you know like what we see in this kind of a traditional painting positive and the negative accumulation of karma is more to do with your accumulation of habit like an example you know when you have an anger issue when you have a jealousy issue when you have uncertainties uh, throughout the day and then that's what you dream and your dream becomes your reality in that very moment when you are dreaming you know so it's very important to understand that the karma in general we should not you know gossip with our karma and you know with so much uh, chaotic imagination but rather we have to understand the karma in this very moment as a positive habit and negative habit you know so if there is a positive habit that we can accumulate over time and then sense of detachment over time, you know, to the fixation of the false idea of self, and then in the time of death, also there will be less fixation. The less fixation there is, the less illusion there is. The less illusion there is, the more liberation there is. You know, so, so that is a clear understanding that we need to have. And that applies to, uh, to ourselves as a practitioner in general. So, so that's that. Namji chami chizu chuma chijam mevun kolo jujege panjo yeje magi shudulu namje kanna lege Jesu da chijatu me gojam mevun me tada ni tada ni ni chizu me baro gosam gebe le le be baro. So therefore, understanding our reality, you know, circumstances, you know, so based on that clear understanding, and then we must dedicate our body, speech, and mind to the Dharma. So. Um, go some give it in the paper. So, so that's the first chapter. So now I'm moving to the second chapter, which is a very favorite one. So if you don't remember everything about this creation completion text, and if you think this is too long and too boring, too serious, and this is not for me, or if you have that kind of imagination, fine. I'm not your caregiver, but at least if you remember the next chapter, which is only a few line that you can keep in your mind, it will be helpful throughout your lifetime, you know, because it's an original teaching, you know, it's not my opinion, it's not her opinion, it's not his opinion, it's a genuine teaching from the realized master, that master itself being recognized by many other practitioners, you know. Mm, so that is something we have to keep in mind. 
냠렘 망동 인중 권하이 so 냠렘 망동 인중 권하이 in order to initiate yourself you know to start right in order to initiate yourself is the renunciation so i think i have to explain this to you because many of us when we think about renunciation we have this kind of imagination that we have to abandon everything without any sense of clear understanding and many people they almost become irresponsible and they cannot make a distinction what is responsible and what is irresponsible and they more or less they see themselves being irresponsible and then they have regret and then they go backward instead of going forward whether you are a monk or whether you are a nun or whether you are a lay practitioner whether you are just an ordinary practitioner whatever you call yourself so therefore the meaning of the renunciation has to be developed over time it doesn't mean that you have to abandon everything understanding the reality of the suffering the cause of suffering again and again and again and again you know and making the changes by little by little is the true meaning of renunciation you know many of us we are so desperate for recognition you know we want to make a big change in our life the big thing change the clothes change the lifestyle make it into something great with excitement be careful excitement is not renunciation is simply a emotion that is in a, a state of excitement that is not a renunciation that is not a clarity you know like an example you know when you have a clear renunciation over time then you can be like a buddha shakyamuni where you can shave off your hair and make a distinction between the lay person and a practitioner himself you know so therefore renunciation should not be done with excitement should not be done once in a while and abandon everything renunciation is a way of thinking is a philosophy to protect yourself to be humble to be clear to be aware that is the meaning of renunciation changing name changing clothes way of living lifestyle irresponsible is not renunciation renunciation means understanding the true cause of suffering and having the clear understanding of the relative truth and then making a you know uh, renouncing little by little over time and then at the end you can make the ceremonial renunciation when you have a full realization you know so the renunciation has to be there throughout our journey it's not something that you think about it in the beginning and abandon over time because the moment you abandon the renunciation it's the same as you're losing your awareness we need a sense of awareness all the time the moment you lose the awareness in your mind in your life as a practitioner then that is the same as losing the dharma that is same as a losing the path you know so the very definition of so called being a practitioner comes down to having a clarity to having a clear understanding the true meaning of renunciation nyamlen mangdo nejo konai nyamlen jugo deba konai nyamlen jugo deba konai nyamlen jugo deba konai it means in order to initiate yourself you know in order to enter yourself to the gate is having a respect respecting to three jewels is not a devotion showing respect having a respect to the dharma as a text telling other people to be respectful it is our duty it is our responsibility it is our responsibility like an example if you see your grandparents or grandchildren's picture you know jumping over by other people throwing into the fire by other people being disrespected by other people you will definitely go there without a single thought you know so so therefore that is our basic human common understanding the human values and when it comes to dharma it's even more it's for it's a method for the liberation for ourselves from the stigma of samsara so therefore having a genuine respect to the dharma is very important when you when you are reading text always place it higher always clean hand never touch your mouth and your text at the same time 
Never read the text while you're eating, while you're gossiping. Read the text with the purest intention. And even you read a few lines, just be content with that and place it into a respectful place, not just some kind of a, you know, some kind of a science fiction book, you know, that where you put all over the place, but rather you keep it in your, to your shrine. And if you don't have a shrine, at least put it cleanly in the, in the library location where you place, you know. So I think it's very important. Unless if you have a digital, then you don't have to worry about it, right? Uh, so, um, so having a sense of respect, you know, is necessary. The, the grand path of being a practitioner is compassion. The grand path, you know, to the path of Dharma is compassion. So I think that is very important to understand. We have to be compassionate to sentient beings. We have to practice compassion, but we don't have to generate compassion to the sentient beings right away in action. Okay, these three things are very different, slightly different in the beginning, especially when you are a practitioner. Like an example, if you truly say that you are a compassionate being, you are saying in this meaning, you are saying that you are a, a realization individual, that who have realized there is no self, but simply the nature of mind. Still, we haven't reached there yet, right? So therefore, we should not say, I am a compassionate person. You cannot say, I want to be compassionate. You cannot be compassionate because that is a realization state of mind. You cannot be enlightened. You cannot be happy, right? So, so therefore, having that kind of distinction is very important. So therefore, ourselves as, as a practitioner, we have to visualize Tonglen practice, right? The practicing compassion, practicing compassion, Tonglen practice again and again, visualizing the Avalokiteshvara again and again, and spreading the radiance again and again, then thinking of all the sentient beings as the relatives of your, of your present, past, future, and then keeping that into your mind. And then slowly, slowly, as you accumulate this positive quality, and then naturally, it will become your attitude over time. Naturally, it will become your way of thinking, way of doing, way of dealing, way of overcoming, you know. So when you have a compassionate state as a realized being, you are beyond illusion. You are beyond fixation. You know, you are beyond suffering. And that's how you can, in that moment, you can say, I am a compassionate being. But unfortunately, in that moment, you will no longer say, I am a compassionate being because you have realized that is a false fixation of the false belief of self, right? So, uh, so that's that. Nyamle shunam inje konai, nyamle soshin tsechik dutsui, nyamle soshin tsechik dutsui, nyamle soshin. The very essence of life as a practitioner is having a strong root. Okay, so what is the meaning of having a strong root? The strong root means having a less activities you know, is a strong root. Having many activities and being chaotic is not a strong root. When you are chanting, simply chanting. When you are practicing, simply practicing. And having a sense of needless attitude, having a sense of content, sense of rejoice, sense of peacefulness, you know, and that is called a strong root as a practitioner and that is very important like uh, like we say uh, like i've been saying this all the time the traveler runs out of shoes the practitioner doesn't uh, loses the temperature of the cushion because you abandon all the worldly activities and you are always in the needless state of mind as a practitioner and always having a sense of awareness talking about awareness now it comes the next sentence Many of us, when we talk about Dharma practice, we think of it as uh, a carrying a text with us all the time and being inseparable with the pictures and the texts and the statues. That is true in that way. But the true meaning of inseparable of the Dharma practice 
comes down to having a sense of awareness. So what is awareness? The awareness is simply being in a state of knowing. If you have extreme ideas of awareness, such as like a playing a sport, like a playing a football, you know, like where you have to kick and defend and protect, you know, and then if you and strategize, if you have to strategize, that is not awareness, you know. If the strategy mind can be uh, awareness, then all the business people can be awareness all the time. They can be the great meditator eventually, isn't it? So the great strategist and the great, you know, a strong concentration is not awareness. Okay, so that is one. The other one, the, the other extreme one, is when we recognize our you know, projection of thoughts, then we gossip with our projection of thoughts, and then we tell ourselves, I have recognized the projection of thoughts, I did it, this time I overcome, this time I overcome, and non-stop gossiping with our projection of thoughts. That is also not awareness. You know? So the meaning of awareness is simply being in a state of knowing. Knowing is a state of clarity. Clarity is also the state of emptiness. Right? So if you are visualizing a deity, you know, so there's, and then the third one is that there's a difference between the visualization and then imagination. Imagination does not have a structure. You are imagining and you are projecting and you are creating. In visualization, you are visualizing from the top to the bottom, bottom to the top, whichever the figure may be, whatever the object may be, your mind is in, always in the constantly in the state of knowing, knowing everything at the same time, but no gossip, no extreme concentration, but simply being in a state of knowing of that visualization of the deity or the object or the syllable or the mantra. That is the true meaning of awareness. And the other false is being paranoia. Paranoia is not awareness either. Okay, so that's the that's the conclusion of that topic. So that is the definition of being inseparable of the Dharma practice. In order to overcome our obstacles, we must have a faith in the three jewels. We must have a trust in three jewels. And I think there's nothing more to speak about that because if you have a sense of awareness, if you have a true meaning of renunciation uh, to yourself and sense of honesty, there is definitely a sense of faith and sense of trust to the three jewels. So that's, let's keep that very simple. And it is simple. So, uh, these two are similar sentence. Uh, in order to overcome our obstacles and confusion, you know, is to, you know, the method is to have a pure devotion. And the true meaning of the pure devotion is having a sense of no expectation in return, but simply seeing that individual as a great being and pure appreciation with the rejoice and sense of humbleness and sense of genuine gratitude, all simultaneously together is a devotion. Devotion is not about crying and being emotionally unstable, you know. So devotion is having a sense of clarity and every single sentence teachings that is coming from the Master or coming from the Lord Buddha's teaching and then profoundly listening to everything in detail and, you know, uh, being in a state of awareness at all times and then fully dedicating and with a deep gratitude and making a prayer combined together is devotion. Mm, chanting only is not devotion. Uh, in order to overcome our illusion or the obstacles in the path of Dharma is to find or to receive a key uh, method from the instructor or from the master or from the guru. And there is this this one I have a true explanation. One is that if you happen to, you know, have a good instructor with you or 
or close to you, then of course you can have some kind of a uh, conversation where that master can give a technical advice from his own personal experience or her experience, right? Uh, but other Dhamma means a special teaching. Dhamma can be found not just in the teachings of the masters, but also uh, can be found when you are reading the text. You read the text, you know, 10 times, 20 times, and then there's a few sentences where you re deeply reflect into your mind, and then you, you, you know, it brings a sense of pure joy and sense of pure content, and it brings the tears in your eye, not literally crying, like but one or two drop of tears and simply content and simply joyful and then in your mind nothing but clear mind you know oh this is true i have not seen this before but now i have seen this one deeply gra grateful and in deep gratitude this is pure good you know and then you know that is the impact of the dhamma you know the special teaching i call it uh, Nyamne near the Tasum Chitova, Shedan Trivikin Kurmaluba. It is very important to see the deity and the Buddha and Bodhisattvas and the protector equally inseparable, you know, because all the teachings of the deities and the Bodhisattvas and all the protectors, you know, all linked with the 84,000 teachings of the Buddha, you know, so therefore we should see that equally as possible. And inseparably as possible, not something like, oh, protector is less, deity is higher, guru is somewhere else, not like that kind of perception. You know, so that's something very important to uh, to keep in mind. Uh, whether it's a deity, whether it's a wrathful, whether it's peaceful appearance, always seeing as a uh, as a gift of the guru and the blessings of the guru is important. You know, so, uh, you know, and finally, recognizing the nature of the mind based on the visualization of the deity practice. Uh, so, so that's it for this time. Um, the first and the second chapter and the preface. Uh, so I will make a dedication and I will say a few words at the end. So nam de tam je de ban ye tam ne ye ben da nam pam je ne ge ga na je ba la tu wei si ben so lan ro wan ro ro jo chang ju sen jo ren bo je ma ge ba nan ge jo je ge ba ni ba me ba ko ne ko de pa wa jo la ma ko bo ye me la da ni ge be jo je da ni je dum je ge ni mo ma de so je ko bo la ma ye me la da ni ge be jo je da ni se je dum je pa che ma de so wa jo okay so we will see each other in this upcoming month in the online gathering and looking forward to seeing you all very soon and wishing you all the best and many tashi delik bye bye